Thank you so much for that introduction. And hello, everybody. Um, I'm assuming like a lot of you, uh, you know, uh, that some of you have kids at home. Uh, I have told all of my kids uh, not to come upstairs for an hour. But because I said that, I guarantee you someone's going to break in. If I had just said nothing at all, it would have been fine. Uh, so real quick, uh, uh, y'all already know where I work, uh, but I do want to share my contact information. Uh, I struggle at every single line of code I write. Like that's why I've been blogging for a long time because I'm really slow. Um, I'm really great at failing coding interviews and stuff like that. But if you have any questions about what I'm showing today, I really like to share stuff. I really like to help. So absolutely feel free to reach out at me. My blog has a contact form, RaymondCamden.com, and I tweet on Twitter uh, at Raymond Camden. My DMs are open and you should absolutely follow me because I only tweet super critical business important stuff, nothing silly at all. Uh, this entire slide deck and the demos uh, is up on GitHub uh, and you can grab the bits. But again, if you have any questions about anything, just reach out. Also, uh, Brian and I are writing a book and we're writing it for Manning. And one of the cool things that Manning does uh, is allow you early access. So like you could buy it right now, it's not done, uh, but as more and more chapters get released, uh, then you just get those updates for free. Uh, if you go today to manning.com slash D-O-D-T-D, uh, it's half off. Uh, so uh, it's a great time to buy it. Uh, I know we are a bit past halfway through and I think it's gonna be a great book. So definitely check it out. So uh, Brian started off kind of talking a bit about how he started off and like how he got into the jam stack. I wanna do that as well. Uh, my old stack uh, for a good 10 plus years consisted of Apache. I used Cold Fusion as an app server and I used SQL Server with MySQL. And if I wanted to do search uh, for my cold fusion based website, uh, I would typically have a SQL query like this. Now, I, I never did select star, uh, I swear, I, not once in my life, but something like that, you know, select content from my blog. Uh, and then I would search against a couple of different properties and I would take the user input uh, and, and use that for the search. Now, while that worked, uh, it was kind of poor in multiple ways. Uh, first off, you know, the user had to kind of know how to, you know, what to type in and it had to be precise. Uh, and typically the results would just come back. Uh, normally I would order by like date release or whatever, but in terms of the quality of the match, you know, if I'm searching for cat and the fifth result actually had it a thousand times, there was no kind of real indication uh, that the fifth result was actually the best result. And there was no support for doing things like, hey, I searched for cat, but cats would have been fine or leaf versus leaves, you know, that that kind of, uh, you know, support. Now, I want to be clear, I know SQL Server and MySQL, they, they've added uh, a long time ago, actually, support for better search than the kind of basic way I did it. But that's honestly like how I did search uh, working uh, in those old school pre Jamstack days. So how's it going now? Uh, I am all about the Jamstack. Uh, I definitely, you know, when I when I introduce it to people, I definitely don't try to oversell it, which is hard to do when you really like something. But uh, while it's absolutely not 100% applicable to everything I do, when I look back at my history of web development and all the things I did with an app server and a database, a huge portion of that, a very significant portion of that could have been done with the Jamstack. Uh, for me, uh, I started working with the Jamstack, again, like Brian before it was called that, uh, back in 2013, using the product called Harp. It's still around, but not really in development anymore. Uh, it was a great one to start off with because it was incredibly simple. Uh, and I began to kind of like, you know, migrate uh, all those old cold fusion sites. What I found for a lot of them is that yes, they were dynamic, but I was changing the data once a month at most. So I started to migrate a bunch of those sites into simple static generated websites and take out things like cold fusion, take out SQL server, et cetera. But what happens, I think what happens to everybody who starts looking at this is they realize, oh, I still need some part that is dynamic. 
And for me, search was like the number two most important thing uh, that I kind of lost when I switched to the Jamstack. And obviously, number one was just basic form processing. And we could definitely do a whole session just on that aspect uh, as well. So today, uh, I'm going to talk about a couple solutions. Uh, everything I'm showing today are things that I've actually used in production and played with and done demos and stuff like that. Uh, certainly not showing every single option out there. I only have 30 minutes. Uh, I'm going to be showing three different things. And to me, it's ranked mostly from easiest to most powerful. Uh, obviously, your mileage may vary. What's easy for me may not be easy for you. And it's, to me, it's not only easiest to kind of more powerful, but also different types of integrations, uh, you know, with one being super simple, one being more work, et cetera. And like most things with the Jamstack, you kind of have to go into figuring out what you want, what you need, and what is going to work best for you. All right, so for the first solution that I'm gonna talk about today, it is the Google Custom Search Engine. Uh, that's how I have known it and for a long time. And when kind of uh, working on this slide deck over the last month, I realized, oh, they changed their name to Programmable Search Engine, which is dumb in my opinion. Like, I think Custom Search Engine really described what it is and Programmable Search Engine uh, sounds like someone in marketing just had to change the, the name uh, to earn their keep. Uh, but basically, it's really kind of simple. Uh, you begin by defining what you want to search. Typically, this is your website, but it doesn't have to be. You figure out what you want to search, and Google just gives you code that you drop on a page. And literally, that's it. Uh, the kind of marketing uh, home site for it is programmable uh, search engine.google.com. This is the solution where your boss comes at you, you know, Friday at noon and says, hey, we need a search engine and I want it done before you leave today. Uh, this is definitely something that you could do incredibly quickly uh, with some drawbacks that you're going to see. So I'm actually going to build one real quick with y'all live. Uh, this is the dashboard for uh, their service. And you can see I have a couple of mine up here. I'm just going to click add and I'm going to search my website. Notice, uh, and hopefully this is readable mostly, but you can define not only like your.com, but if you have a developer product, for example, and you have like slash docs and you want to focus to search on that, you can absolutely support that. You could even do individual pages as well. So Google does a good job here of giving you control over what's in your index. But I'm gonna say just my uh, own particular website and I'm gonna say test live as a name and just click create. And literally that's it. So a couple things I wanna point out here is that yes, you'll get some code. I'm gonna get that in a second. Uh, but they also give you a public URL that if you want to start testing, you can do so right away. So I know I've talked about cats at some point, and you could see, there we go, all my demos involving cats. Uh, but what I want to do is I want to get that code, and it is a script tag and a div. I'm going to copy that, and I have a template ready for it. I'm gonna save it. Uh, so this is not a Jamstack site. It's literally just an HTML page, which by the way, that, that's allowed to. Uh, you don't have to use a static site generator, uh, but I wanted to show like a very bare minimum layout around uh, you know, the code that I drop in. When I say this and I go back to my demo, let me reload it. You can see I do have some UI provided by Google and you know Google is going to let you know that, that they're doing this. I have the search button in there already. And if I, yep, a uh, new keyboard. There we go. How's that? All right, no problem. So uh, a couple of things. So out of the box, you know, first thing you'll notice is that it uses this kind of weird modal pop-up. Um, it does provide you the links. Oddly, this time it didn't put 20 ads in front. Uh, I want to be very clear that they, you know, they, they're providing a free service. They want to earn some money. Typically, there's a bunch of ads in front. So if I like search for cold fusion, I 
know I'll see some ads. Yeah, one. Uh, in my experience, I've seen four to five ads. So just kind of keep that in mind. Um, but I could go here, I could click a link. It also opens a new tab. I don't like any of this, of, of that type of behavior. But if you go back in your dashboard, you can begin to kind of modify how things work. And they actually do a really good job of showing, you know, like a live preview on the right side. Uh, so I, for example, want a full width result. I don't want the overlay and I could test over here and I could see that it goes in there. Uh, and that's just kind of one example. And if I wanted to, I could also customize it. Uh, I am where design goes to die, but espresso sounds nice. And I could save this here. And actually, if I go back to the my web page and just reload, I should see. And that that color change was really subtle, but that's a nice brown now. And in theory, I will get the results in the thing, unless I forgot to hit save, which is entirely possible. Yep. So full width save. So now if I reload. I'm not gonna spend too much time on this because it's just options that you can mess with. Hey, there we go. All right, so uh, that is some of the things that you can do with it. And you saw me, that was literally five minutes. It was super, super fast. Uh, you can do more with it. Uh, they have documentations. You could do things like specify where the results load. So uh, if you don't want that, you know, the uh, open a new tab thing, if you wanna keep it in the same tab, you could do that. Uh, you can also enable autocomplete. Uh, that takes a little bit of time, just FYI. It won't be available immediately when you turn that on. And you can also do things like uh, noting input via query string. And that's a fancy way of saying is that if your website has a little search box on top and the user enters something there and they hit submit and they land on search.html question mark Q equals whatever, uh, the Google custom search engine can pick up on that URL parameter and default the search to that. Uh, there's a lot of different uh, docs showing uh, all the kind of uh, different little tweaks you can do. Uh, I have a quick example of autocomplete and I can never type live. There we go. So if I type cold, there you go. So uh, and that's not style at all. And again, the autocomplete does take time to work. Uh, but if I click that and I get results and I could click and this is gonna stay in the tab. And just to kind of show you how that worked, it was via a set of data attributes. So there are things that you could customize in their particular dashboard. And there's things that you could also customize in your HTML as well. One last quick example, just to kind of show you uh, supporting a query parameter. Uh, if I type Vue.js and hit search, the page reloads, and that may be a little bit small, but I have Q equals Vue.js and Google's search engine picked up on that and defaulted to that. And that was literally just, uh, that was baked in. If you actually want to modify the parameter, if you don't like Q, uh, you can specify data dash query parameter name to specify something else instead. So that was real quick. Again, I have like three different demos. I do have this live on a website uh, if you wanna see uh, cflib.org. This is one of my old cold fusion sites. Uh, but if you search for like email and click in here, uh, you'll see it shows up and do notice four ads. So again, you know, it's a free service. If you're okay with that, literally this is the five minute solution, which I think is pretty darn cool. Uh, more about it again, it is free. Uh, if you are a nonprofit, there's a way to reach out and uh, get the ads taken off. They also have a JSON API. Uh, so you can do completely customized UI. It is not free. Uh, and you, even if you pay, you have a limit of 10,000 queries per day. But uh, that is an option. And I believe it was something like a dollar for a thousand or uh, is something like that. Uh, it, it costs money if you want to use the JSON API. All right. That was solution one. Again, very quick, very easy to use. 
Solution two is Lunar. Uh, this is entirely client-side, although you can use it with Node.js as well. It works with a index, and I'll talk more about what that index means in a second. It supports stimming. So that example I showed earlier where if I search for leaf, I may want it to match leaves, or if I search for leaves, I want it to match leaf. Uh, basically, it, it handles those, those different variations of the words. Also provides scores for your results, which allow you to do things like, hey, I got 20 results back, but I want to do a cutoff based on that score. Also allows for really complex queries. The issue with that, of course, is that you have to ensure that your audience knows how to do that. But if you yourself want to take their bare input and modify it uh, with Lunar Syntax, you can do that. So the basic way that'll work, you will determine what your index is, basically what you want to search. You create an, uh, an array of that data, you pass it to Lunar, uh, as well as giving a primary key, you know, a way to identify each piece of your data, tell it what you want to search, and then you search against that index. I will tell you that first bullet point is gonna be the one that you'll spend your most of uh, the time doing because you have to figure out how much of your index you wanna to ship to the client. So if you're like me, uh, my blog has 6,000 blog entries. Lunar is a non-starter for me based on that size. If you have a number something below 6,000, it's definitely gonna be a bit better. Something like developer documentation, which you know may grow, but it's not exponential. You know, Blog in theory can grow forever. Developer docs are pretty much set and could be a lot safer for Lunar. But you begin by you know, dropping a script tag in, uh, create your index. And again, this will be based on whatever your content is. You create your index using the Lunar API. In this case, this.ref is how I set my PK. And the field is, is I'm saying, this is what I want to actually search. I add it to my index and then literally that's it. I basically, you know, once I have my index created, I can begin searching against it. So I have a demo and I will show it running first and then I'll show the code behind it. Uh, this particular demo is using Eleventy. Uh, you definitely do not have to use Eleventy, uh, although I think you should. I'm not biased at all. And I just double checking real quick what port that was for 8080. All right, 8080. Okay, so very simple kind of blog demo. Uh, I have four posts, but I wrote about dogs and cats. And if I go here and search about cats, I can get results. So in this case, all the search experience was built by me. I could make it look a little bit nicer. I could even expose things like the score if I wanted to uh, tell people how good the result is. The way that this worked, and I'll do this code a bit quick, but again, this is all in the GitHub repo that you have access to. Uh, inside my 11 site, I built a JSON export of my data. So in this case, I'm looping over my blog post, um, outputting uh, titles, URLs, dates, and content. I am doing a filter on my content, in this case, one called excerpt, which all that does is grab the first paragraph. Again, that, you know, that's me thinking about my content, thinking about what I want to search. For developer docs, you may want the entire page, or you may want three paragraphs or so. Uh, you know, Lunar basically uh, leaves it up to you to figure out you know, what you want to include in your uh, search index. But this essentially is it's going to output a JSON file, and we could see how that looks there. Uh, to search it, uh, all I did was a bit of vanilla JavaScript where, you know, when my page loads, I fetch my data. That's that raw JSON file. Uh, I then build uh, my index and then I enable my search button. For searching, I, I do my search against it. And if I have results, uh, the way that Lunar provides the results back is it provides that PK, that, that, that primary identifier, uh, as well as things like uh, the score and other metadata for the search result. So I get the actual document, the, uh, the actual docs I matched and then just write that out. So Lunar is uh, definitely a very kind of hands-on do-it-yourself type approach but it gives you complete control over you know, every single aspect of it. Uh, you know, again, you are shipping that index to the user. 
So if you had 6,000 blog posts, uh, you probably do not <laughs> want to use it or, you know, that's not always true as well. You could say, hey, I'm going to provide search, but I'm going to cap it to the last two years of content. Uh, so, you know, you definitely have options for, you know, how you want to do that. Uh, some more things to think about Lunar. Uh, it supports pre-compiled indexes. Uh, so I found out about this like last week and I, I wrote it in my slide deck to, to make a, a, a note of it. I ended up having time to build a demo of that. So uh, on my blog, and I think it's actually the last thing I wrote about, uh, I talked about how to do a pre-built Lunar Index with Eleveny. And essentially it removes that process of having to build the index. You still have to work with your data. So you still have to kind of think about the size of your index, but the work of creating it can be done. And, and this, in my case with Eleveny, uh, I do it after the build process using uh, the after build uh, event for that. And if you want kind of a longer form version of what I did kind of quickly just now, uh, I have a blog post where uh, I walk you through, you know, the entire process of getting your content, uh, creating your index and adding the search. Uh, again, with Eleveny, but you could absolutely uh, apply that to other static site generators, uh, the one that you like the best. And you should definitely check out that demo uh, because it uses GI Joe and I'm all about GI Joe lately. So uh, that was option two. And, you know, again, uh, in my mind, I've kind of gone from the super simple, I could do it, you know, in approximately like five minutes or so uh, to a more custom hands-on type solution, which may be a more appropriate for a smaller site or a site where the size is not going to change dramatically. Uh, I keep mentioning documentation as an example of that. And you could certainly add more docs, but typically, you know, your feature. So, you know, you have a cowbell, developer tool feature. Uh, I would love to be a developer evangelist for Cowbell. Just let me know. Uh, you have that, you know the features it supports, you know the documentation, you're gonna have that. It's not gonna be a surprise. Compare that to a blog where, you know, hopefully you have a good uh, writing cadence and the your, your content just grows over time again and again and again. For that, Lunar may not be as appropriate or it may be appropriate early on. And later on, you have to look at another solution and that will be solution three. And I'll pause dramatically to take a sip of water real quick. And for me, uh, the kind of third solution is Algolia. So uh, this is not a free service, it's a commercial service. Uh, but they have a great free tier. Uh, I, I have a large blog. I'm not saying I have a good blog, uh, but I have a large blog with a lot of content and I am able to fit within their free tier. Uh, I kind of barely fit, uh, but you know, I, the fact that I could fit there uh, is I think is, is pretty good. Uh, this is also index based like Lunar. The big difference is that the index is going to be on the Algolia side. It's going to be on their server side. So I can have this index of 6,000 plus uh, blog entries uh, that I don't have to worry about shipping to uh, the uh, client every time that they want to do search. And the way that you work with that index is all going to be via uh, APIs and there's code libraries, you know, as well, but you know, essentially they provide a CRUD type way to work with their index. So uh, when you start with Algolia and you have ex existing content, you can kind of shift it all up there at once. And then as you add, edit and delete content, you can update that index. And there's tools that make that very, very easy as well. Uh, it does do a really good job of you know, you know, trying to find quality search results. And what I really like is that they have a great doc that talks like literally about like, hey, you search for foo. This is how we took that and kind of figured out what makes sense for you. Uh, and I like that they spelled that out very clearly. Uh, I am linking to it here if you want to see it. Uh, everything is API driven. Uh, and you'll see examples of that. Uh, they do have many, many kind of code libraries. Uh, I did a lot of my work kind of by hand with them. Uh, again, because 
I had a large set of content. And when I first started working with them, I was actually above the free tier. So I did some work to try to get around that. I, well, that sounds bad. Uh, <laughs> I did some work to, you know, to still kind of use it, but still stay within that free tier. Uh, but then they changed that recently. Uh, so that was a bit easier for me to work with. Uh, they do provide some really, really good analytics um, that I think is really powerful. Uh, and I'm gonna show an example of that up, upcoming, but you know, uh, being able to see what people are searching for and like what they're not finding is a great way to kind of figure out what to write about next. So I've mentioned their free tier a couple of times. Uh, you know, if you're watching this in the future, these prices may change, but essentially, uh, 10 units is free, where a unit is either a thousand search requests or a thousand records. I absolutely don't get a thousand search requests, but I get 6.5K records or so. Uh, so I'm still within their free tier, but you know, in a year or two, I may approach it. Um, in terms of developer support, they have a crap ton of integrations. So no matter what your platform, they have a way of working with it. Uh, they have really good uh, documentation as well. Uh, and I have tended to focus a lot on the REST API myself. Uh, in terms of the basics, you sign up uh, in your dashboard. Typically, uh, you will create your index, and this would essentially be your bucket. So for my website, I have a index. You figure out uh, you know, what you're going to index, and then you send that to them via a, an API. Finally, you add search to the site. So they have a pre-built search thing that you could just drop in. I wanted more control of it. So I used their JavaScript library, but I used the one where I could set up uh, how it looks. I mentioned that they have a CRUD for index. They also have, uh, and this is actually a third-party tool, but there's a NPM package called Algolia Indexing that can do updates for you uh, automatic, automatically. Uh, it's very nice. It doesn't work for me because it creates a copy of your index. So I mentioned how they have like a 10K uh, limit on that free tier. I'm at 6.5. If they doubled my content, I would go slightly above the free tier. So this is not what I ended up using. And they also have a completely automated solution for Netlify that came out like two weeks ago uh, that I will show. So uh, I do have a full demo of this uh, on GitHub, and I do have a live website on this uh, that kind of shows you this in action where if I search for, I think it was fruit, no results, cherries. What did I have? I forgot my own canon, cherry. Let's do cherry and beer. Uh, but this particular demo is all up on a GitHub repo. Uh, I also have a blog post talking about this as well. But if you want to see an example of integrating Algolia uh, with Eleventy, I can show that. Uh, but like I said, even better, like two weeks ago. Um, and if you are a Netlify user, Algolia made it like two clicks. So like you connect your site to Algolia. Uh, they will automatically crawl your content on builds and then you add the UI and you're done. So obviously this is really helpful if you're on Netlify. Uh, and again, this is really, really fresh. It is using uh, Netlify's build system, uh, build plugin system, which is also something that I think it's really awesome that you should look at. Uh, more stuff. Uh, again, they do send a weekly report. I mentioned that this is a PDF dump from the email I get. And on analytics, I could see what people are searching for. So I don't really do a lot of cold fusion stuff anymore, but people are still searching for that. Uh, for a short time, uh, I did a series talking about front end developer questions and how bad I am at them. Uh, so I could see what my popular searches are, uh, as well as you know searches that had no results. Again, crucial stuff to kind of keep in mind in terms of what you could add. So you know, calendar add an event only on Fridays. That's a bit unique, but that's interesting. So uh, for my blogging, I keep a list of all the things that I want to talk about at some point. That is definitely something that I could add to talk about later. Uh, they do have great analytics. I'm a bit short on time, so I'm not going to do too much on that. Uh, and they absolutely support a lot more than what I'm showing today. Uh, my use case is 
relatively simple. Uh, I will show you the source code for this. So again, I couldn't do that nice little NPM package that doubles things. So what I ended up doing, and this is on the repo for my blog, and this did not get big. Let me do that. Find like that. So I actually clear my entire index and I send my entire index back up. Uh, because I'm using the same primary keys, I don't lose analytics, but they support a batch operation. And that's how I do it. Now, in theory, this means that for 20 seconds, maybe probably less than that, my index is empty because I'm getting 20 search, you know, uh, 20 searches a week or so. I'm fine with that. Like, okay, I'm fine with that particular uh, issue. So uh, there are more options. You know, Bing has their own version of custom search, Elastic Ad Search. Uh, Brian shared with me like a few minutes ago uh, this post up on pajamas.io, which uh, uh, also goes over different options, including some that I have done and some that I've never heard of. So uh, when he shared that, I'm like, I'm not gonna look at that now. <laughs> I'm about to present on this. Like later today, I plan on taking a look at this, uh, but you definitely have more options than I could show today. And I've been checking my timer and I have 35 seconds left, so I win. Thanks, Ray. That was awesome. I expected no less though, even if you are my arch nemesis. <laughs> <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> <laughs> so we did get get some questions. Um, one of them, actually, it's I'm gonna because it's relevant to the topic specifically. Um, it's actually something I thought of as well. Of of the three search tools you presented, if money were in, if money and limits weren't a factor, which would you choose? If limits, so I really like Algolia. Um, Lunar is also very compelling as well because I have complete control. Um, so I would lean on Algolia because of the analytics. Um, I'm actually planning on doing blog posts on how to do some basic analytics with Lunar using like a Fauna backend or a Mongo backend. You can absolutely roll your own. Uh, but in terms of, you know, I need to go live this week. I need the analytics this week and I'm not worried about money or the size of my content, then I would definitely go with Algolia. I, I've been very happy with it so far yeah. on my blog. Yeah, I, I agree. In fact, I was watching your presentation. I'm like, oh, shoot, I forgot to update my index for my, <laughs> my Algolia index. And I was like running that in the background. Um, you know, it's one of those things I definitely have to check out that build plugin because, you know, right now I have to run that index locally and then push it up. But anyway. So I'm, I'm looking forward to trying that. Um, and I actually, uh, we'll get to a couple of the other questions, but I had another question for you myself, which is, okay, assuming you were trying to do uh, a free solution like the, like the first two versus Algoli, like at what point would you move from, say, something that's indexed, um, like the Lunar solution, to something else? Uh, wh where did you feel, given your blog was big, right? Where did you feel you started to to get to that point where I'm pushing way too much JavaScript for this index? Well, like everything, it depends. So like I knew immediately, like I, when I switched to the Jamstack from my blog, uh, I was already at 6,000 blog posts. I've definitely slowed down a bit since then. So I knew immediately yeah. that it was too much. So my first was a Google custom search engine. Uh, I didn't like all the ads, even though I have ads on my blog. Uh, I'll be honest about that. Uh, so I began looking at other solutions there. So you have to know your site. So you know what you're doing. Hopefully, hopefully you know what you're doing. You hopefully know what you want to expose as searchable content. And then you just kind of have to guesstimate it, you know, like, so, uh, if I look at my docs from my imaginary cowbell tool and I see, oh, I have 30 pages. Well, okay, 30 pages and raw text, you know, that's probably 20K. That's a small image. That's probably not bad at all, JSON size. So I have no problems shipping that whole thing to my, uh, to my end user. So you start with what you think, maybe do a quick proof of concept. Uh, in 11D, it's so darn easy to output JSON. Do that, see how big the file is. If it's, you know, 50K and you think, okay, like I, I've written my docs, 
I may add a couple more tools or next couple of years, it may grow to the 70 K that's still smaller than half the cat pictures I have, I have on my blog post. Cool. Yeah. You know, I was using, I was using lunar and, and actually I still am on my blog and I think it's, uh, you know, you have to really get kind of consider that it's, it's easy to do without really thinking about the fact that you're pushing all of that JavaScript for that index down. Um, so you got to be careful, but, um, so, so on that, okay, so, just, just one more quick note yeah. on that. Don't forget the browser has excellent storage mechanisms. So, uh, if you want to use something like index DB, if you're comfortable with keeping a sync between my client has an index I built on Friday, July 1st, uh, I have to check my server to see when I last updated my content. It may not be that often. So a client cache solution, uh, could be a answer as well. Cool. Okay, so we did have a couple other questions, but they're they're more on on the Jamstack community or industry or whatever you want to call it. Um, and given that that you know you've been in, involved in this for quite some time, I thought, well, okay, it'd be good to ask you these as well. So, question uh, from Billy is: Do you think hiring around the Jamstack is increasing? Can you get a job as a Jamstack specialist? Well, I think. The, the skills involved apply to every aspect of it. So if you were still doing, P still doing, that sounds negative. If you're doing PHP, ColdFusion.net, you're still building web pages, right? You're using a different tool in the back end to generate them. You're using an app server, but you still have to generate uh, HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. So uh, if you were only to learn how to use Eleventy, for example, to build a website, you still have to know HTML, <laughs> JavaScript, and CSS. So those skills apply to multiple different uh, job descriptions. So, uh, you know, to me, this is a different way to deploy a website. Uh, it's, mm -hmm. it, it adds to my existing web knowledge. Yeah, I would, I would completely agree with that. I'd even add that because the Jamstack is basically an assembly of a ton of different technologies and services and stuff like that, you know, I could move to a different language and still, like, as an example from your your presentation, I, uh, Algolia is still relevant, right? Like, I mean, I don't have to unlearn Algolia because I went, you know, even if I build it in PHP, I, there's ways to use Algolia in, in that, right? So so I, I, I would agree with you. And I've seen a lot of people looking uh, with Jamstack and job titles lately. So absolutely. Okay, so next question. This one might be a little bit harder. Which, which companies are helping democratize the Jamstack for non-devs the most? It's like, which companies are making the tools more accessible for somebody who's maybe new to, to coding? So, honestly, that's an area that I've not worked a lot with, and you have, Brian. So you've done a lot with CMSs. Uh, in the book we're writing, that's the area that you're working on. Uh, that's something I can't answer because it's not something that I have, uh, you know, thought a lot about. It, I thought a lot about it in terms of I need to get more uh, knowledgeable about that. There are absolutely yeah. people building CMSs and people thinking about that. Uh, I'm building a Jamstack with some folks in town and they're non-devs and I've kind of run into, you know, doing things. So like, for example, uh, I, I built a Vue.js admin tool for them to write content. It's like my own little CMS, but I have to educate them in terms of, yeah, if you change a like product name, for example, we have to rebuild the site and I can make a button for that, but I have to let them know if you change a product name, that means the site rebuild. If you change a product price that actually does not because I'm loading that via JavaScript. So it's, it's the, I think since day one, that was the biggest issue. Like it wasn't as friendly for non for non devs. And that is growing exponentially in terms of companies looking to hit that niche. Yeah. I would agree with you. A chapter uh, on that. <laughs> yeah. Um, I would agree with you. I think, I think the biggest, the biggest thing is, is for non debt, like there's beginning devs. I think that there's a lot of things that are making it easier for them, but also non devs is, 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 um, important in terms of the people who need to come in and edit content or, you know, maintain the, the image, you know, items in your, in your product listings and so on and so forth. That, that to me is like where we need, you know, there's a lot of companies working on this and where I think the Jamstack still has room to grow, 
is by making it easier for all of that. I think developers, like the whole developer experience is part of what people come to the Jamstack for. So I think, you know, it, it's great as it is, it can be better, but but it's more, can we make it accessible for the people who want to live edit stuff or, or you know, or update products and so on um, without needing to know how to edit Markdown and things like that, right? So uh, one more question for you. Um, well, actually, there's two more, so we'll try and get to them quickly. So have you ever built your own Jamstack tool? If so, what is it? If not, what Jamstack tool would you like to see come to life? <laughs> They're making these hard on you. These are all like philosophical no. questions. <laughs> yeah, so like I, I, my introduction was with an existing tool, HarpJS. Um, and then I went from one tool to another, to some that I liked and didn't like, to you know, now I'm all about Levity. Um, I don't feel the need to do that per se. Uh, the closest I've done is when I was migrating some cold fusion sites, I definitely built scripts that would like read from SQL server and output markdown files, output JSON files to make them ready for an existing static site generator. Uh, I've definitely built utilities. Like when I migrated from uh, like Hugo to Jekyll and Jekyll to Eleventy, I had to build scripts to kind of handle uh, some conversions in that respect. Yeah. Uh, but no, I, I've not built anything. I can tell you, so like what I would want is what like Eleventy gives me, which is freedom to kind of do whatever I want. Uh, I love that, and this is not just Eleventy, but I love that I can write bad code and it's only on like my system. And then it builds out nice HTML and no one sees my ugly code. Like I have a stats page for my blog that's EJS, which is a, not my favorite template language. I do horrible, gross things there. But in, when it's done, it's a lovely HTML page. And I'm fine with that because it's my code. It's not run the client. It's run the build. And that's it. Yeah. I love how you're, you're, one of your favorite things is you can write bad code. Thankfully, I, it's not a problem I have. <laughs> All my code is amazing. I, will, I just won't share it with you. Um, <laughs> OK, last question here. Uh, in the last few minutes we have, um, which I'm sure your employer will love this question. Uh, as a dev advocate from here, what's your elevator pitch? What's, why should Jamstack devs look at here over comparable tools? Well, devs in general, I mean, we have location services for developers. So routing, geolocation, uh, geospatial storage, mapping, um, you know, I, I think that we have friendlier tools than a certain large search engine that I was promoting a few minutes ago. Uh, but no, oh, I, I think we have I really, not naming names. I, I think we have really friendly mapping related tools. And I actually, if you go to the developer.here.com slash blog site, um, I actually have an example of using the Jamstack with our APIs. Awesome. Okay. So, uh, that's all the questions we have for today. I'm looking forward to actually continuing to work with this on this book with you. Um, not that it's, you know, it's been so easy, right? It's not taking not, any not time. Yet, so please don't stop. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. 